Lord Jesus, think on me, by anxious thoughts oppressed. Let me your loving servant be, and taste your promised rest. For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer, found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book, or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be. Today's New Testament reading is from the Epistle to the Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since, therefore, it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appoints a certain day. Today, saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, 
God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who in every respect has been tempted, as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome the Rev. Dr. Jeff Gibbs, Some things just seem to belong together. Peanut butter and jelly, love and marriage, pancakes and syrup. Other things don't seem to fit together. War and peace, darkness and light, good and evil. In Hebrews chapter 4, there are two truths for Christians that at first glance don't seem to go together, but they really do. The first truth is striving. Verse 11 says, let us therefore strive to enter. Striving is effort, it's exhaustion, it's uncertainty. You strive, but you might not make it. That's why you have to strive. The second truth in Hebrews 4 is this. Sabbath, or in English, rest. Now you could make those two things fit together by just putting one after the other. First you strive, later you rest. And there would certainly be truth in that. Hebrews and the rest of the Bible knows that the Christian life is hard work. And we're surrounded by spiritual danger without being paranoid or paralyzed by that. We all need to live realizing that we could stumble, we could fall. Hebrews 4 describes the ancient Israelites who lost faith in the wilderness and says they did not enter God's rest. But I want to bring the two truths together in a slightly different way, and here's how. Restful striving. Now, there's no doubt that Hebrews is urgent, and the letter teaches us about the dangers of falling away, the need to hold fast, to keep our eyes on Jesus, and not to stray away. But that striving is based on and is possible because of a rest that has already been won, and a rest that has already been given by God. And that's why our lives in Christ can be thought of as a restful striving. Now, I said just a second ago that the rest has already been won. Let me make that plain. The rest has already been won by Jesus, and he is resting, sitting at God's right hand. Now, as we all know, it wasn't always that way with Jesus, in a way that only he could do. He came into the world to strive, to do battle, to live with a faithfulness that we could never generate. He did what we could never do. In the next chapter, in Hebrews 5, we hear where Jesus' faithful striving led him. And here's what the writer says. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered a prayer and supplication with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, there's a lot in there, but here's the upshot. Jesus faithfully walked all the way to the garden, all the way to the cross, 
for us. And in the garden and from the cross, he calls out to his father, Father, I finished striving. I commend my spirit into your hands. Father, I'm dying now under the weight of sin, and my enemies seem to be taking all my striving, all my faithfulness, and throwing it into the garbage. But I trust you, Father. Save me from death. And God did. It was not possible for death to hold God's Son. The Father raised him from the dead, and in victory, Jesus is sitting, resting, exalted on high, and he is our high priest. And that means that as we strive, we do it with him on our side. He went through what we're going through. He knows our weakness. He knows our fear. And because of the perfect sacrifice of his own body, our high priest pours out his forgiveness and cleansing on us every day of our striving and every moment of our lives because he knows us and he loves us. And he's prepared a rest for us and for all his people that is guaranteed. It's perfect. It's stored up for us and it's ready, as First Peter says, to be revealed at the last day. So, even as you strive to live your Christian life, you can rest because of Jesus, because of your perfect and sympathizing high priest. The Christian life is a striving to be sure, but because of Jesus, it is a restful striving. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. 